uh, what I'd really like to talk about today, um, I'm looking at um, uh, a, a, a vision of how people look at paintings, how people look at art. And uh, the way I look at it is I'm always trying to discover something, something new in it. And so when I start uh, painting or when I think about something, I like to work into it. Um, so uh, I feel because paintings are mute, they don't have uh, language of uh, visual, and um, besides visual, they don't have a language of words, or they don't have a language of music or anything. It's tougher for people to try and get into it. Uh, in the next nine minutes, I'm going to try and show you uh, examples from my work, because I know it best, of how I try and weave these ideas into the work. And when you are trying to look at a work of art, you should try and discover something about it. I mean, sometimes the simplest of things uh, actually have very deep meanings, or very deep understandings, but it takes a long time to sort of acquire that. So this is one of my early works. And uh, this one is actually, I mean, it's kind of showing a scene where there's, uh, you know, people are in a rain, it's uh, lots of umbrellas, but it kind of talks about how the metaphor for how people try to live within their own little umbrellas, within their little spaces. And uh, the only person who actually has his umbrella closed is the blind man. So, you know, maybe a little close up, uh, you'll have a look at the work itself. It's, it took me like a little over a year to work on this. And you can see the complexity of the work. And if one went even closer, you would see like the faces uh, are actually landscapes that are part of the thing. It's another one which I have uh, used talking about uh, all politicians. And uh, I, I've left the face blank, so you can actually slot anybody in there. It's like one of those. <laughs> and uh, the garland is the garland is really about what they carry with themselves, you know. And if you look closely into the garland, you'll see things like snakes and you know money and all this kind of stuff. Like they're carrying it with them. It's uh, soon after I started. Uh, I mean, now there's a whole span of uh, 40 years of painting. I can't show all of the work. It's it's really a lot. But in the last series of works, I was working with the idea. This is, you know, I'm trying to find something that you don't apparently see. And it's the way today's world is. We're working with the digital medium. We're looking at computer screens. We're looking at telephones. We're looking at, you know, anything that you have today, it's in a digital form. And what it's actually doing is it's giving you this binary code. And that's where all the information is. It's actually in a cloud. It's not even real. It doesn't even, it's not even tangible. So I started working with these series of paintings that were talking about this, about this, you know, is life real? Is it only in our head? And uh, so I started with uh, a polycarbonate with text on it. Now, the original one was only binary code or ASCII. And uh, then as I was sort of delving deeper into it, I worked into the next generation, which is when I wanted to make a statement of some kind, why don't I use the same binary or ASCII as text? So when you see the picture, this is how it looks like from a distance. But as you get closer, you can actually begin to read the text on the thing. So the entire painting changes. It becomes another world. And here it says you know, something about a dissident. It says, um, uh, every generation ruminates their existence. It's the ascent of dissent. <clears throat> and the next generation, again, it was trying to work with now a single layer. It's doing both. It's talking as words in the canvas, and it's showing the, the canvas itself. So I'm painting, I'm printing, I'm doing a whole series of stuff on the same surface. And here again, you know, it's like the boy looking out into uh, the, you know, into uh, actually looking at a picture of Rabindranath Tagore. This was done for his 150th year binary, uh, the centenary for uh, uh, his birthday. And uh, down below, he's, you know, it's the ideology and the iconography that today is being worshipped in idol form rather than, you know, the belief that he said. People should talk about 
you know, what religion is all about and not just the icons. Again, taking that sort of idea of using symbolism or what we really see, this is objectifying something. We take an animal like the cow, which we, literally it's worshipped in India. They give it, you know, gives you your milk and your, you know, pulls your bullock arts and whatever else they make out of a cow. We've trivialized all of this life into one little symbol. And again, that's what I'm doing. I'm sort of trivializing this whole thing by making half of his body in text and using like a barcode, which is, this one is a QR code. So it also takes it to the next generation, which is, it allows you to kind of go into the QR code and read something else on the internet. Um, when I started sort of working on this uh, idea that, you know, you can do this with paintings. How about taking this with sculpture as well? I was commissioned to do a sculpture on Sachin Tendulkar for a traffic island just outside of Sasmira. Uh, and uh, they told me, of course, their criteria was it should be on Sachin Tendulkar and, and it should last for 100 years. Uh, I won't last that long, but the sculpture will. So I decided to do something with materials which are very new. I worked with carbon fiber and, uh, and a very high quality of aluminum. And I got it fabricated in a factory making Formula One cars. So it's actually beautiful material, beautifully engineered. And when I designed the whole idea, it was to play with. We create this character, we create this person who's larger than life. And he's today larger than life. 20 years from now, will he be larger than life? We don't know. So how about, if you want to see him, you see him. If you don't want to see him, it just becomes another work, an abstract work. So from the side, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> As you sort of get moving towards the center of it, you begin to see a little form appearing. And of course, this is what it looks like when you're facing it. So, thank you. <laughs> so now I figure that after 25 years or 30 years, if he's no longer an idol, you can just take each of these bars out and shuffle them and it becomes an abstract. <laughs> um, my last uh, piece now is I'm going to finish with this, so I'm not going to be speaking anymore because it's, it's a very important piece for me. It's uh, when I moved into the visual language of video art, um, I decided to make a, a video that is a loop, an infinite loop. Because when people come and see a video art thing, they have to sit through it. Here you can come in any time and you can leave any time. It just keeps on looping for itself indefinitely. And uh, well, you decide for yourself what you think. Of course, this goes on and on. <laughs> Thank you.